Yeah. I wanted to become an entrepreneur myself when I went to school, um, but I was never facilitated. What I see is that a lot of entrepreneurship programs are offered by people who are not entrepreneurs themselves. Yeah. We're not educating for researchers, we're educating for entrepreneurs. Yeah. The subject experts are from the field. We have global entrepreneurs uh, uh, teaching. When you're teaching from the book, you're teaching outdated content. A warm welcome on 7D TV with a new interview with my guest Thomas Blackman. And Thomas Blackman is co-founder and dean of the Global School for Entrepreneurship. A warm welcome, Thomas. Thank you, Ronnie. Uh, a Global School for Entrepreneurship. How did the whole project start in the beginning? Um, and why? <laughs> It, uh, it started uh, some three years ago yeah. uh, when Timo Timmerman, my uh, co-founder, and um, uh, previously he started uh, two universities before, yeah. he asked me if, would, if I would like to join him to create a bachelor program of four years from a blank sheet of paper. Mm. So three years ago, I didn't even know I would own a, a University of Applied Sciences. Mm. And uh, why? Because uh, there are a lot of... We, we really want to change entrepreneurship education. Because it's not good? Uh, no. <laughs> no, it's ridiculous. And how but do you? But but how how do you do that? I, you know, uh, I know how to start a company, but to start, uh, I didn't uh, know either. No, uh, um, so I I learned that from Timo. Um, uh, he has uh, started uh, University of Applied Sciences before. Yeah. And apparently, what you need is an accredited institution. And once you have an accredited uh, institution, you can apply for new programs. Okay. And that's what we did. So I got, I'm the architect of the bachelor program. Yeah. Um, and uh, we bought an existing University of Applied Sciences as entrepreneurs. Ah, okay. And build on that one. Yes. Yeah, okay. So, so we only had to create an uh, only the <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, we had to create an entire new program. Yeah. How did uh, you do that? Well, I started off uh, at Erasmus where I had a bachelor minor. But I was always limited to three months of teaching program with the students. Yeah. And I had to teach 90 students at the same time in one classroom. So we had to put them in teams and they could never be facilitated personally. Mm -hmm. And not everybody wanted to become an entrepreneur. Yeah, so the fallout was great. Yeah, you also see that in studies. A lot of studies. Is a, a lot the, of the fallout is insane. Yeah. Uh, the, but that's, that's a whole different reason. Maybe we get to it later. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, the, the thing is, what we wanted, what I wanted to do was extend the three months to a longer period, and then I got four years. And you wanted to work only with students that have the ambition to become an entrepreneur. Yeah, because yeah. I wanted to become an entrepreneur myself when I went to school, uh, um, but I was never facilitated. So what I, I ended up working at a bank of all places, <laughs> and I did do inno innovation projects and stuff like that. So uh -huh. the innovator in me got satisfied, but the entrepreneurial yeah. uh, part was still lacking. And uh, and and how how difficult was the process before you really could open the doors? Uh, it was quite a challenge yeah. because everybody told me cannot be uh, this cannot be done. Mm -hmm. uh, this is not the way we do programs. Um, so and I didn't want to put students in a classroom for half a year and then do theoretical exams. Yeah, I wanted to to be facilitated hands on by entrepreneurs because what I see is that a lot of entrepreneurship programs are offered by people who are not entrepreneurs themselves. They're not credible. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't get it. Yeah. There are researchers uh, studying how others do it. Yeah. That's how we build up the whole myths about entrepreneurship mm -hmm. that you need to be a risk taker, need to be visionary. And it's insane because they just don't understand. Because mm -hmm. if an entrepreneur tells them that they're taking risks and that, they're, that they have had a vision, they write down vision, high risk taker, because they don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, the people that, are do, that do the education are all entrepreneurs themselves? All entrepreneurs. Okay. Uh, uh, we stayed on the website 75%, but we're doing better than that. Okay. Because I, I just, I can't work with people that don't understand what the students are going through. And the students are going through the development of creating their own... From day one. Uh, aha. So it's not like you learn the theory and then when you're graduated, then you can possibly... No, that's maybe the problem. Yeah. Because what happens, then you have four years of studies, then they go and try to start, but then they only have limited time because they want to start a household or they yeah, want yeah, to... Yeah. And then they have limited time. And study time is a great time to start a company. It's awesome. Yeah, they have no, nothing to lose. No. no. And, and, and we actually freed up the agenda during the week so that they can really work on it and get facilitation 
from experts. They get coaching from learning coaches. They are in it. We are in an incubator environment. That's exactly what I wanted to ask. It's almost like an in, in, like an incubator. Well, it is, if you, you you cannot share this with anyone. No, 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 no. But no uh, we, we won't. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's an official study. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, uh, but you uh, are. it's actually an accredited incubator. But, yeah, that's but what because it is. we facilitate the incubator with modules, and we have assessments every five weeks. Yeah. And th those assessments are actually building blocks of your business. Uh -huh. and, and those get assessed. And then you also get a bachelor degree at the end. But the whole goal is to get you started to run a business. Hey, but you don't finance. So you, you, feed, uh, you feed them with modules, not with investment capital. Um, uh, um, uh, we do. <laughs> but not as, as if not the school. In, in our network, in our ecosystem, exactly. there is a company called Unknown Group. And Unknown Group is also one of the uh, co-founders from Hen uh, Hendrik Halbe yeah. um, and his team. And, and they are also part of Ventures One. And Ventures One is a venture capitalist. So we now have our first student going for venture capital. Yeah, because I can imagine if I would be a venture capitalist, if I'm a VC, I definitely want to fly around your uh, students and see if, if the yeah. new Steve Jobs but, but or not the new from Elon the start. Musk Not from no. the start. Because first we need to help them get to credibility and get some traction and figure yeah. out what actually works and what doesn't. And then if it's big enough, then we uh, help them to become successful in the process of getting funding. But it's not the goal as such, no, no. because not every entrepreneur needs venture capital. No. It's, no. Just, it's no. an option. Yeah, yeah. you can also just work, make profits. And then and, and and for your money. own revenue, yeah, exactly. finance yeah, the, yeah, the yeah. growth. Yeah. How are the results? Because you're, how, you're two years now. Uh, uh, we're, we're, running? we're running for two years. We're starting the third year now. And the first year were how many students? Eight. And now? <laughs> 80. 80? Yeah, 80. And uh, and where is it? Is it because we're, we're, we did, we're doing this interview in 2020 now, so COVID-19 yeah. is there. Um, yeah. uh, is, is, it a f is it like a virtual place to study? Do you have physical places? Is it the combination? Uh, the thing is, um, we, we have really small groups that we facilitate. So it's a face-to-face -face education in Amsterdam. And there we have no more than 23 people in a classroom. Okay. On average, it's 18. Okay. Um, but when COVID hit, we had to sort it because we were not allowed because we are a, a, a fully accredited University of Applied Sciences. Yeah. So we were not allowed to do physical education. Mm -hmm. So we flipped the switch and we went to online. Yeah. Now that's was already planned to be a, a, a project because our first students would go to Barcelona. Mm -hmm. So we were prepared. Mm -hmm. So within three or four hours, we were completely running online. Everything yeah. we did yeah. in the physical area, we did online. Yeah. And now uh, we are actually offering a hybrid version. We, we call it the you choose policy. Uh, the students uh, should feel comfortable in the classroom. Uh -huh. And if they don't feel comfortable online, they should be able to be in the classroom. Uh, so even Harvard at the moment is doing residential living, but online classes. Okay. So we're outperforming Harvard at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, you don't have any graduates yet, right? Uh, we have one because one yeah. of the first eight students was actually a transfer student. Uh -huh. So now he's finished his aptitude test. So and we have the first graduate. And does he have an uh, does he have an enterprise? Yes, okay. But not as big as he wanted because he uh, chose not to proceed with the one he had, and he's now starting a new one. But the 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 way we uh, test at the end is an aptitude test, so not a thesis, because we're not educating for researchers; we're educating for entrepreneurs. Yeah. So we want them to prove mastery of being able to build a new business, and in the last uh, three four months. He built a new business. And how are the rest of the AT students doing? Can you give well, me the, some the, insights the about what, what yeah. kind of people are it? What are they doing? What are their ambitions? Uh, what, what I'm really proud of is the fact that it's 45% is female and 55% is male. Okay. Which a lot of people don't expect because yeah. of it, the fact that it's entrepreneurship. Yeah. Um, so we have people that are uh, also successors to family business. Uh, uh -huh. One of the uh, female entrepreneurs, uh, Lieke, she has a grandfather in the medical devices. Yeah. And uh, she had a really uh, a, a busy time during Corona. Mm -hmm. um, but then there's also a student from Brazil who's now, who has now opened a Brazilian restaurant. Um, there are students who uh, trade uh, uh, limited sneakers. So they have a platform where they sell limited sneakers. Um, uh, there's all different types of... Uh, there's a student uh, that actually wants to become a corporate entrepreneur. 
uh, so more business, so entrepreneur. Yeah. Um, and he's now working with uh, uh, hydrogen shipping. Uh, so there's all different because the, the yeah, because I can imagine that the profile of uh, graduate uh, graduate student from your study can also be very interesting for corporates. So it doesn't. Yeah, mean we, exactly we have a, we have a um, uh, how did we call it? Um, I think it was the yeah the the, the board of uh, of inspiration. Yeah. And there are corporates in the board uh, that uh, we talked to and we showed them what the profile of the student that we were educating for and the program. Yeah. That we would love to have some students from your once they're finished in our business because yeah, we really also need to yeah. create new value propositions and yeah. do innovation. Yeah. How international is the are the eighty students from how many? Um, they're from all over the world. Yeah. Um, uh, we were uh, doing better uh, with the the, the averages. Forty uh, percent now is no, uh, is. Uh, um, Dutch, so sixty yeah. percent. No, for other way around. Forty percent is non-Dutch, okay, and sixty percent is Dutch. But that had to do with Corona, with the fact that our growth from the new group is coming uh, largely from from the Netherlands. Um, but uh, others in that group are from Mexico, uh, Dubai, uh, um, South Africa. Uh, um, they're from all over Germany. All over, okay, how unconventional is the way you teach? <laughs> um, I always find it difficult because we put on the website it's unconventional education it's because they tell us oh this is rather unconventional yeah. but then I, when I get the question I find it difficult to answer because for you it's normal no it's because it's really difficult to uh, uh, distinguish the, between what we do and what's already being done because a lot of people know what's being done and they compare us to that Yeah. and, and unconventional to us is that I took some, uh, I have a background with leadership and executive development. And the way we did those programs was with a, a trainer um, who would be doing the group. And then there would be guest speakers coming in, mm -hmm. sharing knowledge. And then the trainer would actually do the learning process on what do we do with what is just being told. Mm -hmm. What do we take on? What don't we take on? Mm -hmm. um, what do we think of the speaker? Stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And I actually copied that model to our classrooms. So on every group of 23, we have a learning coach. And those learning coaches, when they don't work for uh, 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 in my classroom with the students, they coach executives. So we really have a high-end yeah. executive coach that is teaching the students how to cope with disappointment, to reflect, how to, to, to reflect. To reflect on, yeah. and, and so only that part is already insanely valuable to yeah. the development of individuals. Yeah. Um, then on the other hand, we have businesses, consultants from the market, who teach our uh, uh, content. So the subject experts are from the field. Mm. We have uh, a growth hacking agency teaching growth hacking, and if they get a new tool or a new insight you know. uh, today, yeah. it's in the classroom on Monday. Yeah. So I, I've written three books myself, and I know how long it takes to write the book, and then how, how long it takes to get it into a program. Mm -hmm. So when you're teaching from the book, you're teaching outdated content. Per definition. Per definition. Yeah. So, uh, what do you think of regular education? <laughs> well, the thing is, uh, <laughs> Holy I, have the to laugh. Be, I, I, <laughs> I have to be a little bit respectful because yeah. I, I, I worked for Erasmus as a clinical professor um, for for quite some time. I started there at 2005, yeah. part time, one day a week, um, and um, I, I I really love how serious they're taking it, and I had some really good colleagues. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, is that they are actually researchers. And they also teach, mm -hmm. but their primary interest in their careers is that what they're uh, 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 what they're appreciated for is the is the the, the researching and the writing of articles. Mm -hmm. I know of uh, someone who was a, a colleague who was really excellent in teaching executive students. He loved teaching, but he then he didn't really manage his article writing process, and then he he was just uh, asked to leave, mm -hmm. and 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 that's the biggest issue. So there are researchers teaching students knowledge. But you can Google knowledge. So what I see is also the memory quizzes at the end. They, s they, they have multiple lectures and, and multiple modules during half a year. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the half a year, they have to study for their exams. And they, they pass. But after a month, they don't know anything anymore. Mm -hmm. Because it's short-sighted. Uh, yeah. uh, and it's only memory quizzes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And we really want to build experiences. Yeah. So the way we educate is by applying. So branding is not reading the book about branding and memorizing steps. It's building your own brand book for your own company. Yeah. It's a new th way of... It's, it's, yeah. <laughs> it's different. That's uh, also why we started the school in the first place. It does cost for more than 14K. Yeah. Is that, of course, that is, that's a lot of money. 
It's a lot, uh, but that depends to what you compare it. If you compare yeah. it to Nairod or Tio, yeah. that's 18,000, 21,000. Um, the thing is, we're not subsidized by the government. It has disadvantages and a lot of advantages. Yeah. And what, what does that mean for uh, youngsters that come from uh, poorer families and stuff like that? They can that? finance the entire thing through Duo, okay. which is the uh, entity in the Netherlands that uh, gives out loans for studying. Okay. And because we're fully accredited, they can finance it through Duo. Um, you w- and there's a lot of articles in the newspaper about the stress that that gives having the, the loan. Yeah. But if you look at it as an investment in a company... We have so many students already making more than the tuition fee. They could choose to pay off. It's a stupid choice yeah. because it's the cheapest money an entrepreneur yeah, can yeah, find. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's true. But it's if you look at that that way, and if they it's, have, it's deductible too, huh? Yeah, yeah. Because they, they run a company. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They do they all run a company? Ninety nine point five percent, I would say. And one, how is, one is in between, like, <laughs> like yeah, I'm yeah. not and, sure and, yet. And, and and how much of them are really going to be, you know, uh, will have a future what as a com- as a company? Uh, as how a, many of the students that now are busy? We, we cannot predict. No. So so the bachelor uh, degree is a fallback scenario. Yeah. But until now, we only see them going up. Yeah. Is there also is there already a little Elon Musk? Uh, uh, there, there's there's one of the students that's now going for an investment. Uh, Paul, he's from Paris, and and he's built uh, Sneakmart.fr in France. Sneak and market. Sneak Sneakmart. Yeah. Uh, um, and uh, it's a platform where you can trade fashion, uh, uh, um, high end fashion, and uh, th- he's now going for an investment of two hundred and fifty thousand euros. Yeah, he's in his second year. Uh, yeah, th- yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a, that's a startup scene that does. There's a lot of, uh, or there's a number of platforms that are doing yeah, that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. But he's doing it specifically for France. Yeah, he, he studies in Amsterdam, but he can perfectly build an online platform for France. Your global global school yeah. of entrepreneurship. So, are you already situated also in France and all over the world? No, not yet. Ah, but why uh, do you why do you name yourself global? That's yeah. ambition, <laughs> also entrepreneurship. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Now, the thing is, it's not just branding. Uh, we yeah. really have a vision. Uh, the, the thing is, we have global entrepreneurs uh, uh, teaching. Yeah. So, uh, one of our partners is the Anon Group, like I mentioned before. And they have Get in the Ring, which is active in over 120 countries around the world. Mm. They have pitching uh, uh, events. So there's a big, massive community of successful entrepreneurs, investors, and everything. And they teach our students with Ask Me Anything sessions. They contribute as guest speakers to modules. So there is a global knowledge already. um, And we are uh, expanding from Amsterdam to cities like uh, uh, Berlin, Barcelona, Singapore, um, because we are in the student hotel and the student hotel is opening 66 hotels uh, throughout oh, cool. uh, 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 Europe and uh, I think also outside. Yeah. Um, and we are using that uh, 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 foundation um, as a scaling platform for us, but also uh, other options that pass by. Because, for instance, Singapore is with a partner um, that has an incubator there. How would you characterize the next generation of entrepreneurs? Um, well, it's difficult because the, the, they, the, I look at them all individually and then mm-hmm. I see the differences and we try to tailor. So talking about a generation, yeah. what I do think is that um, uh, what I run into is that because of all the, the, the Instagram ads uh, with uh, people lying on the beach making uh, uh, big bucks yeah. uh, um, and then the real story and real life hits them uh, when they are uh, trying to build it themselves. And then I think that um, uh, perseverance, uh, um, uh, really putting in effort, time, um, some really get it and others are a little bit entitled mm-hmm. and we try to help them with the learning coaches to understand and then you see massive uh, uh, improvements and, and 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 personal growth. Yeah. So starting off with oh, I, I uh, really uh, wanting to become something, but then the the acknowledgement that the amount of effort that goes into it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, it's not an easy job becoming an. It's not an easy job at all. And d- is there? Uh, do you th- do you see them wanting to make it a better world? Like uh, that, that's uh, uh, that's in the new generation. One of the things our we have the the bachelor for the. Uh, I wouldn't call it generic, but the, uh, the 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 broad sense of being coming an entrepreneur and the startup. We we now have a green 
uh, version of it, where we put people in teams that all want to build on a uh, sustainability yeah. angle. Yeah, which could and be a uh, big, big, big thing. Big, but, yeah. but we're still, we, we tried this out the last year uh, um, on uh, social media campaigns and stuff like that. And what you see is that we're still a little bit ahead of the market mm -hmm. because they do want it. But the, the thing is that a lot of people are postponing entrepreneurship before because they still think that they should go to a generic university first and learn something yeah. before they turn entrepreneur. Yeah. Is that a frustration for you that you have oh, to definitely. keep on fighting yeah, yeah. against that? Yeah, it's it's that's not it's uh, it, it it's all it makes also fun. Yeah. Uh, because um, I, I, when when someone tells me I'm doing uh, IBA, I, I always have to laugh because are you going to turn manager? Yeah. Uh, and uh, why would you do IBA? Uh, because it's international. Uh, okay, fine. Yeah. Uh, but why uh, BA? And 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 then so there's a lot of people that are choosing generic routes. Mm -hmm. And we need to bend those patterns yeah. and to show them that there is a viable option to become an entrepreneur. And you could also, because it's, it's we, we talked a little bit before the recording, like it's also a little bit of a paradox, right? If we go, entrepreneurship and education, because a lot of successful entrepreneurs weren't that good in education at all. No, they so tell you not to go to school. Exactly. Uh, there is the, the, what was the f name of the founder of PayPal? Uh, he's actually paying people not to go to school and waste yeah. their time. Yeah. But that's in a sense where, where the, the, there they pay a year what our entire program costs. Yeah. So that's different. Yeah. And at the same time, they don't have the type of process that we are that we have. Yeah. So th so that we are really coaching them on the job yeah. to start and, and have their business and grow their business. Yeah, an incubator in disguise. It's, yeah. it's, it's an incubator. <laughs> 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 Thank you very much for this uh, conversation. And I wish you, uh, I think you're going to get busy the next coming years because it's a growing market, right? Youngsters that want to There are more and more people that, yeah. that we have a connection with uh, uh, youth entrepreneurs, Jong on the name in the Netherlands. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, um, and, and the, these groups are growing and growing. And, um, and more and more people want to become architects of their own life. Yeah. And, and to me, entrepreneurship is a lifestyle. It's not a job. Yep. It's not, uh, and, and, and we really want them not to go and turn and grow into the next Facebook or the, we just want them yeah. to be uh, architects of their own life. That's architects a, of their yeah, own life. I think that's, that's, that's a good description of entrepreneurship. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's see if some of those talents one day can be uh, in the position that you are now in the studio. Of I hope so. Yeah, it would be lovely. Thank you very much for this conversation. You're welcome. And thank you very much for watching a conversation here on 7D TV. If you want to see more, hit the subscribe button on YouTube or watch our podcast. For now, thanks for watching. Bye.